Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're talking about statistics, which as, I well, as you well know by this point is not chemistry, but informs chemistry and I just have a thing about statistics because I'm interested in it. Okay, so, and because I'm getting graduate degrees in it. So, because of that, I think it's important to go over some things. And today we're gonna be talking about p-values. All right, p-values are really important to think about. And the reason why p-values are really important to think about and gain some clarity about is because p-values are really misunderstood. Um, often, folks believe that a p-value that is at a certain point, and we'll talk about what that looks like, gives you absolute truth in whatever you proposed. And that is not true, folks. That is just not true at all. So let's talk about what a p-value is, how we calculate p-values, um, although that'll probably be in future videos to some degree, and what we hold those p-values against in order to make some decisions about the data set that we're looking at. Okay, p-values. Basically, when we talk about p-values, we're talking about traditional statistics. Okay, so repeated experiments over and over again. That's not the same as Bayesian statistics. Bayesian statistics, from what I understand, have more functions that include uh, the likelihood of possible values being within a uh, set and tests and such. So that is a different deal. Okay, in terms of uh, the p-value, what is a p-value? The p-value is the probability, it's where the p comes from, of obtaining or getting a result, a test result, I should say, because you're doing this in the context of a statistical test, a test result that is equal to or more extreme, let me get the other blue here, that is equal to or more extreme, and more extreme is always in quotes because extreme values in statistics mean different things for different tests. Okay, so more extreme than what was absorbed, than what was actually observed. And this is important, folks. Okay, the reason why this is important is because this is talking about that you have uh, some kind, when you run this test, the result is somewhat deviating from what was observed, okay? And so in terms of thinking about that, what you have to always hold true in the midst of talking about this test is the null. Whatever your null hypothesis is, you are assuming across the board that that is absolutely 100% true. So this is with the major assumption. I am squeaky today for whatever reason. The null hypothesis which we call H with a zero by it, is true. Okay, you're not assuming that the alternative hypothesis or the, the hypothesis that is what you want to have happen is true. We're assuming that the opposite, the null, is actually true, okay? In terms of how we measure p-values, we measure them against something else. Okay, that something else is basically a threshold value that we choose when we choose the null. So the threshold, threshold value is called the significance level of the test. and that's alpha, okay? The significance level of, I'm gonna go ahead and say of the test that you're running. The significance level 
is often, we often have alphas that are 0 0.05 or 0.1, and this is relating back to this idea of confidence intervals, right? So uh, 0 0.05 is essentially a 95% confidence level interval. The 0.1 is a 90% confidence, confidence interval, okay? The idea here is that often the alpha value is basically arbitrarily obtained. That's one of the biggest um, misunderstandings and one of the biggest beefs people have with this particular test, with the p-values that exist, okay? Um, because you can start talking about, well, my results don't fit at the 0 0.05 level, but they fit at the 0 0.1 level, so therefore they must still be somewhat statistically significant. Well, statistical significance is something that is really misunderstood because it doesn't mean your stuff is true <laughs> at all. Okay, so that's where it gets very dicey in terms of using this. Okay, so basically what the idea is here is if the p-value, if the p-value is less than or equal to the alpha value, right, the, statistic, uh, the significance level of the test, then the test simply suggests, okay, we're gonna write this in a different color, then the test suggests, it doesn't state that it's absolutely true, it just suggests that the observed data is inconsistent with the null. with the null hypothesis, okay? And therefore, the null hypothesis is rejected. This does not mean that alpha, uh, H alpha or H1, the alternative hypothesis is true. That's not what we're saying. Okay, so this does not mean Can I write this low? Maybe so. You guys see that? H alpha or H1 is true. That is not what we're saying. What we're simply saying is that we're rejecting the null. Okay, that doesn't mean that it's, that the null is wrong either. <laughs> okay, that just means that we can reject it with some amount of confidence. Okay, that's not the same as saying that it's 100% true at any given point. Okay, so, what we can say in the end is we can say that when the p-value is calculated correctly, right? So when this is calculated correctly, what we can say is that the, the test can guarantee that type one error is at most alpha. So, uh, when calculated correctly, uh, the test guarantees, guarantees that type 1 error, and remember what type 1 error is, right? Okay, if you don't remember what type 1 error is, there's a video to talk about what type 1 error is but that's basically rejecting the null when it's true. The type one error is at most 
alpha, the significance level. Okay. That means that, the, like I said, there's still a possibility that the null is true. It's still a possibility that the, the alternative hypothesis is false. Even if you get a p-value that is much, much less than the alpha value, you need more statistical information to be able to really say with some amount of confidence that the null can thoroughly be rejected. And often what this ends up being is that st statisticians run multiple tests. It's kind of a given. They do multiple models, they do multiple tests, they try all kinds of things out so that they can have a fair amount of confidence that you know what they're saying, if they're saying reject the null, or to talk about the alternative hypothesis, we can start saying that that is actually possibly with 95% confidence, we can reject that, well, within a 95% confidence level, not confidence, confidence level, we can start talking about whether that is possibly true or not. Okay, having said all of this, what you need to understand about p-values is they do not just give you, even if you understand how to calculate a p-value, even if you understand how to really get a good significance level, you can test it against other uh, possible significance levels. There are ways to find, uh, to really come up with a good significance level. And you even understand that a p-value that's less than the alpha value is a good thing. That is by no means the final word in statistics about whether a hypothesis, just one null, is true or not. Or whether it can be absolutely rejected without, um, with some kind of a amount of, yes, I feel like this can actually be rejected and I have some amount of ability to say that with all, uh, you know, confidence or not. Okay, so that's a very long explanation to basically say that p-values probably aren't what you think they are, and they probably don't mean what you think they mean. <laughs> okay, what they are is they're one piece of a larger puzzle that we can start to analyze and think about and test. Okay, all right, until next time, adieu. <laughs>